Friday night with Nadine, my next guest was one of the most prominent women in the Conservative Party. Amber Rudd was an MP for nearly a decade, rising through the ranks to reach the great office of state as Home Secretary. But Brexit was one of the main reasons she resigned in 2019. This week, the Prime Minister has announced he struck a deal with the EU. Amber joins me now. Amber, you know when it's said, you know, I've just read out that you were an MP for a decade. I remember your first day. That makes me feel really old. <laughs> you were there for 10 years. Now, how long ago? What, three years ago? Yeah, it's, wow. it's all passed rather quickly, hasn't it? Hasn't it? Just... But you were very helpful to me, I remember, early on, giving me some constructive advice, which obviously I ignored and you ignored. But it was still <laughs> helpful to get at the time. What was it? It was certain women's health issues not to go near because it was always going to be controversial. Oh, I remember now. Oh, I, I do remember now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What, what, what yeah, are the yeah, issues? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, 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 no you sound a bit creepy there. asking. I mean, don't no, go no, there. No, no, we won't go there. We won't even go there on, on live television. It's Friday night. So, oh, yeah. Brexit, Amber, yes. it was a thorn in your side. Yeah, it was a thorn. It think was a thorn in everybody's side. Yeah, exactly. I mean, Parliament was pretty miserable at the time. Yeah. And, and you left, which I still think was like a huge sadness and a huge loss to Westminster that you went. Well, very now, kind of you. People think because we were on different sides of the Brexit argument, I've always respected you, always liked you, and thought you were like one of those really like, big brains that we needed to come in. Well, and you were a woman and you had one of the best offices of state. And, and you went... What, why? I mean, you why make it sound like I was that? dead. No, <laughs> no. you I, left. I think no, I made it clear it's, you resigned. It's, it's very, very kind of you to say nice things about me. And I feel the same way as you. As you. Uh, it takes great courage to be uh, a woman MP and it takes an even higher level of courage to stick to your principles and take all the flack that you get as a result of that, whatever side, whatever debate you're on. And so I always admired you for doing that. And ultimately, I couldn't do what every MP had to do in 2019 if they were going into the election, which is to say how marvellous Brexit is and how we're going to get it done. I always thought uh, that Brexit was going to be a net negative for the country. I haven't, I'm afraid, changed my mind on the basis of the evidence. But I am pleased, moving on to the, sort of the, the question, that Rishi has uh, got a deal in that he's made Brexit a little bit less bad for a lot of people who were adversely affected by it. And so any improvement which will bring about growth in this country must be a good thing, so I really welcome it. So the Northern Ireland Protocol, which actually brought about this deal, because we wouldn't have got there without it, is, is something that I think we still need to keep kind of on the side in case this doesn't work. And I, I completely see where you're coming from. And, you know, I'm, in, I'm still... So, so let, me, let me put it this way to you. I think we've, the, what's happened is the, the Rishi deal is it's definitely a step in the right direction. I almost think it's been oversold and overspun because, you know, there, is a, there are so many, you know, we've lost all sense of a, a border in the sea. What does that mean exactly? And there are, there are a number of issues that I think have question marks over them. But what do you think the benefits of the deal are? Well, it just makes it easier for people to export to Northern Ireland. It's taken away the barriers to trade, which I think is important. Well, but some of them. Some of them. It's but made still, it more difficult but still for some people to... it's, it's the sense of direction. Yeah. The direction is yeah, in the yeah, right place. Yeah, I agree place. with you on that. Um, but what I, what I also think, which could be the biggest advantage of it, is it's improved the relationship between our country and our biggest neighbours. And mm. immediately, Ursula van der Leyen said that uh, we could start the process for entering the horizon uh, um, science body. But, but they, should have said, they should never have stopped us. Oh, I completely agree. But here, we have to deal with the world in which we find it. And we want a good relationship with the EU. Um, it's not been entirely them who have uh, put up, shall we say, the barriers and the difficulties between our country and the EU. We must admit that former prime ministers have sometimes been less than friendly towards the EU. I, I welcome the fact that we now have a good relationship with the EU, I hope, if Rishi can maintain it, and that will bring all sorts of other benefits. So, without being political, but being entirely practical, uh, is this a good thing for the country, good for our relationships with the EU, which could help all sorts of other things, good for people who want to trade, potentially allowing Stormont to go back, reform? Um, yes, yes. It may not be the whole answer, but at least in the right direction. Yeah, and, and you know, I agree with you. It's, it's not the whole answer. It's, it is a step in the right direction. But, you know, my goodness, how difficult have the EU been all the way along 
to get to this yeah. point. You know, we allow travelling musicians from every EU member oh. state to come oh. freely in and out of the UK to play their yeah. gigs. To did any of the EU states Why? allow British music what, what, musicians what to do that? Expect? No. Uh, we, we made this choice. <laughs> what, did you, what did you expect when you were slagging off the EU and wanting to leave? Uh, I mean, uh, quite seriously. Yeah. That, I mean, was, a, that was a revolving door. That was a two-way situation. Yeah, and right. it was, you know, passionate conversations took place and passionate negotiations over what was a very difficult did, situation. Did you... The EU yeah. have been incredibly difficult. Mm. You know, the Horizon programme, mm. why on earth was that think? ever, ever well, something you... that they were not going to But This is why Rishi's, I think, what? achieved so much, because it's a triumph of diplomacy, of mm. kind of really getting into the nitty-gritty, and charm. Charm is an essential part of Dear trying Rishi, to get things done. Dear Rishi, who was called by the EU president. Yeah, absolutely. Dear Rishi. But, we, you know, what's wrong with that, Chris? No. It shouldn't be. I mean, so that makes me instantly suspicious. Well, quite. I mean, it's very suspicious. What are they after? What you, are they the, doing? The DUP's jury is out. Is true. The truth of it. The ERG have hired these these lawyers. I say hire appointed lawyers. They'll decide next week. The, the, we've had the, the government spin all week, and just about now we're hearing some concerns about even in the green zone. There's lots of red tape in terms of the Stormont lock which is on, on new regulation. But it must be significant change. What does that word Chris, mean? Legal is terms. Is it taking us? further forward towards having stronger business ties with Northern Ireland, with taking down barriers and with a better relationship with It's the about EU. sovereignty, not trade, for a lot of these people. Uh, That's the problem. That's the problem. Uh, well, Listening to Nadine, and look, Rishi at times has sounded like a Remainer, and if being in the single market is so marvellous for Northern <laughs> Ireland, then England, Scotland and Wales would benefit too. But leaving that aside, as a, as a Brexiteer in 2016, as Sunak was, if you were still an MP, which you are, would you back the deal? Will despite I, your reservation, will I yes, back despite the your deal. reservation, the Windsor framework. So, like everybody else, I'm looking at it. Will I back it? I don't know at this point. Where, but, where, are, you, where are you leaning? And I don't even know if there's going to be a vote on it. But can I come back to something up, uh, that's bigger and a bigger political issue on this? So, you know, there's almost an expectation within the party, Amber, as you can understand that we're 28 points behind in the polls. Unbelievable. I think it's worse than we were in '97. Mm. There's almost an expectation that this deal is going to be like the put the you know the booster rockets under the party and, and shoot us up. I don't think that's going to happen. What what do you think? Where do you think the party and the government well, are at the moment? Well, Nadine, that? you're do you think much, going to make the difference? much better informed than I am. But I, it feels to me like it's the opportunity mm -hmm. to have the decks cleared because what the public is we all of know, the Brexit issue. Yeah, I mean most of the public and you know I was as we, we know an avid Remainer, but I'm really much more interested in how we achieve strength for this country in a really competitive world and how we address all the things that your constituents will be talking to you about. So if the Conservative Party can now say, okay, most of us are going to vote for this, a few won't, but most of us can vote for this, and we're actually travelling down a road of reconciliation and positive approach, then there might be an opportunity to tell the story. The story that we need to tell ahead of the general election for winning it. But until we look like a party that can work together, nobody's going to hear anything else. Uh, well, guys, can we go on to Matt Hancock's text messages okay. now? Because I think they're much okay. more interesting. <laughs> what do you, did, I don't know if you heard uh, what I said <laughs> about my conversation with Matt last night. Yeah. Quite disappointed that he handed private conversations that I had with Matt. Yeah, love him to bits. But, Matt, what were you doing? But you were handing my private conversations over to a journalist to write a book for you, quite happy for them to go to the inquiry. So he did well, how would you all feel? private uh, conversations. Yes. What, mine too, Nadine? Ah, well, yeah, you yeah. weren't what a minister, you? Amber, yeah. so no, obviously not. Kevin. That is true. <laughs> that is true. No, that, I would be not. irritated too. Yeah. I really would be irritated. But I thought he'd handed it's all, over... all those kisses, Amber, in your, in your, in your messages. <laughs> no, <laughs> apparently, <laughs> Amber, uh, just there you, is personal stuff there in it. It's uh, the, one of the reasons the Telegraph say they won't publish them all is they'd have to redact so much. So if you said, ooh, can I see you for a cosy dinner date? I'm afraid uh, it'll be out. Kevin, it's only you who get those. <laughs> <there. laughs> Don't you worry. Uh, no, I would be very irritated, but I'm afraid it did show, let's face it, some extraordinary judgment to hand over all those messages to um, Isabel Oakeshott. Or, or to perhaps, dare I say it, to any journalist mm, to yeah, hold yeah, them yeah. a pile like that without any yours. sort of judgment at all. So um, he did, she did sign an NDA, and, and I do understand her rationale then an inquiry will take a very long time. But as I said to Matt, an inquiry would have gone through a due process and the protocols, the redacting of that information, all of it would have got out there with the redacting of personal information, and there would have been 
what they would have published would have been only those relating to the substance of decisions taken during COVID. What we have now is every conversation yeah. that Matt's had with everybody, which is in the public domain, which people like me, I'm sure mine will appear one day, never well, expected to We've heard the Telegraph, we're only publishing things which are relevant to the stories we're writing about. We're not doing every single message. For now. But but, well, did, yeah. but, yeah, but, but people in the newsroom will be reading private uh, messages. Yes. And, and, and journalists gossip, don't they? So I'm moving away from Matt and Amber onto, onto your previous role mm. as Home Secretary. Small boats, yes. massive issue. Massive. Immigration, massive issue. I mean, the numbers, Amber, from when you were Home Secretary to what they are now would be unrecognisable. Yeah. Uh, do you think... So, so here's a question. Do you think that the deal that Rishi has secured will make it any easier for us to deal with small boats. And what do you think the fix is? What's the silver bullet that we need to fix the small boats problem and the immigration problem? So, a, as you will know uh, from your own experience as a, as a senior politician, there is never a silver bullet. But certainly one of the ways of improving the situation with the small boats is having a good relationship with the French. And I don't think we've had that in quite a long time. And I, so I do think that one of the benefits of the Northern Ireland Protocol will be... Oh, sorry, of the, the Windsor... <laughs> The uh, Windsor Agreement, yeah. The Windsor, Windsor what's it called? Framework. 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 One of the benefits of the Windsor Framework will be a better relationship with both the EU and with France as a result. So, so you... I would hope that will trickle down to having an improving situation with the small boats. But it is not easy. And, uh, you know, nobody should think that there is one way of solving it. If you've got a lot of people on the move, some of them are going to come through mm. France and get to the UK. And they want to come to the UK because this is a great country. They speak... Uh, English, they might have some family here. They don't want to be in France or in Germany. They come through France or Germany and they get here. And we have to accept that we're not going to stop them entirely. On the small boats in 2018, I think we had about 300. <laughs> it's absolutely. Yeah. And that was a crisis. And that was that became yeah. a crisis. That's right. So I mean, and but we were able then to send some. I think we sent about two to three hundred back to France. So that's quite a strong message that if you get to the UK, you may also be sent back. Can't send back at all. Was that because of the Dublin Convention yes. when we were members of the European exactly. Union? Exactly. Yeah. I mean, I hear a lot of uh, Conservative yeah, right, MPs. <laughs> yeah, he's got his point. Uh, a lot of Conservative back. MPs say send them back. You can't just send people back. We don't send people back to Which is why we've got the agreement with Rwanda. The big yes, choice you've got to make there is about the EC ECHR, and whether disregard yes. that in, in... You've got a big choice coming to you as an MP too on the ECHR, the European Convention of Human Rights. Will he disregard that? That'll be, be supportive of in the Red Wall, some firm action on, 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 on small boats. I think we've seen the, the, the turning point of this government this week. If he can get this Brexit deal done, he's ticking up already in personal approvals. If he gets Brexit, if he gets the, the small boats done, and he does some form of tax cuts in the budget, by May, if, if, it will look if. a lot differently. Well, there is no sign of any tax cuts coming, Christopher. 